Okay. Okay, so let's begin. We'll just start, feet at shoulder width, knees softly bent, back nice and straight, arms just relax and hang down by the side. Connecting down through the feet into the earth, connecting up through the head into the heavens, heaven chi pouring down, earth chi surges up, it gathers deep in lower dantian. And then we move from lower dantian using this energy field to gently turn the body. Gently turn the body. And then we can raise the hands and just let the body turn from side to side. So always on a Friday, sorry, Wednesday morning, this exercise is less vigorous, I think. Sometimes you can go off with a great sort of, you know, enthusiasm for this exercise. But from a healing perspective, it works very well just to get the chi gently flowing. It can be done sitting down as well as standing up. It's a nice flexible exercise. So I don't have a, a huge amount to offer this morning, but I have just been tracking around one particular idea. And it's around pain and suffering <laughs> and enlightenment. So I suppose that does sound like there's quite a lot of meat in there. <laughs> now I think about it. But I was just thinking about um, things like ibuprofen and uh, painkillers in general. And the fact that a, a painkiller doesn't do anything to the actual site of your pain or wound, it just switches off the receptor that tells you that something is wrong there. So, yeah, painkillers just kill the pain, as the name suggests, but they don't do anything, of course, to the body. I mean, the point is that if you're not struggling so much with the pain, you know, sometimes you can relax a bit more and the body relaxes and heals itself. But the idea is that it essentially just switches off the switch. And so, as we know in Qigong, pain is an indication that qi is not flowing well through the body. And then I thought a little bit about the emotional equivalent of that. The emotional equivalent of that is some hurt, some thing that has gone on in our lives, and it creates us emotional pain. In the same way, you know, we can kind of avoid our emotional pain by not engaging with it. We tuck it away, we hide it, we you know, forget about it. And so the thing that seems to be common about pain and emotional pain, uh, sorry, I missed a slight link out there, which is the idea that you can distract yourself from your pain or you can use a painkiller. So I think, that, you know, sometimes when we're um, busy doing stuff, we can forget about pains that we deal with. And so I think that the thing that really brings our attend, uh, brings a commonality between the two is it our attention. And so if we find ourselves not doing anything and dwelling on a pain, it seems to magnify it somehow. Same true for the emotional one. If we put our attention on the emotional pain, the emotional upset, we can magnify that too. And so we have this process of, um, and I think a good example of the other side of that is flow, which we hear so many people talking about these days, being in a flow state, something that all athletes attempt to do, isn't it? And I think that that's that moment when you've really occupied yourself with something, when you're you know, deep in thought with your knitting, colouring, uh, walking, 
whatever it might be, Qigong, let's hope uh, that you can actually really, really go deep into those ideas and that somehow that takes your attention away from both physical pain and emotional pain. And so it's exactly as Dr. Pang says, when we give something our attention, we actually start to increase it. We actually give it energy. And so by taking our minds away from the problem, we're kind of removing the energetic aspect to our pain, be it emotional or physical. So I was just sort of playing with the idea of pain, suffering, really. And so we always hear in sort of Buddhist texts and things like that about suffering, that life is suffering. That's quite an interesting idea, isn't it? That everything in life is suffering. So we just step out of that idea that everything in life is suffering for a moment and look at this whole enlightenment story. Just one little brief stroll towards that idea. Everything in life is an event. Jeremy doing class, a car driving by, the dog barks, the bird flies by. All of those things are events that are happening in this kind of chi universe of ours. And the question is, how does your consciousness respond to those events? Man shouting in the street or Jeremy doing qigong. Hopefully with Jeremy doing qigong, you think, oh, lovely really enjoy that and you respond to it man shouting out in the street you think oh god what's he doing why is he upsetting me like that and so it's down to your consciousness and your framework that surrounds your consciousness to see how you respond to each event so i think that enlightenment as a whole is about thinning down the forest of reactions that we have and taking it easy when something comes by. Okay, so let's just uh, extend this exercise a little bit. So you know the story, we slow down and then we try and make it a bit longer. We look over our shoulders and get the whole term to extend. Okay, so yes, so if we transfer that word suffering to being events, we see that suffering equals events in my maths equation events equals suffering. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? So suffering equals events plus attention. What attention do you put on that event? And so there are always things occurring in our planet. That's just the nature of this life. That's the nature of the game that consciousness wishes to play. But the question is, how does your localized version of consciousness respond? And in the Buddhist ideas, everything is suffering because we're constantly responding in some way to everything around us. And the other side of it would be that enlightenment is essentially not responding, just allowing. So when the man shouts in the street, you don't immediately say, ah, oh, why is he shouting? When the dog barks late at night, you don't think, oh, what is that dog up to? You just allow. Just allow those things to be. Because they are just events. So this is how we lessen the suffering in our lives. is by not jumping on every single thought. Not by responding to every single event but just allowing ourselves to step back from the fire and see it and think, oh, there's a guy shouting out there. It's nothing to do with me. There's a, you know, a, a relation who's just said something horrible. That's got nothing to do with me. That's their problem. You know, there's a child fallen over. I think, well, you know, nothing to do with me. That's that child. And so that sounds rather cold and callous. 
The question is, what do you do about events? If what you do is put a huge amount of judgment layered on top of the event, and then it does create suffering. If what you do is respond in the natural way, then you're just flowing with the doubt. So you see a child fall over, you go over, you pick it up and you dust it off and give it a kiss, and then life carries on. If you decide to become traumatized by it, oh goodness, and then the child fell over and I didn't do anything about it, and oh, then suddenly you've created a problem. <laughs> So you see, so the flowing in the Tao is what we're trying to do, is just responding naturally as things come along. It seemed obvious to walk over and help the child. Simple. Or, you know, there was a, <laughs> a motorway between you and the child, and it seemed obvious not to run across the motorway because you would have been killed. Oh, somebody else picked the child up, so everything's good. You have to react naturally and be natural and be as natural a person as you possibly can be. And when you live in a natural world, as events happen, you respond naturally to them. I suppose you might look at a sort of chain of events in nature. What might that be? The apple falls off the tree worm arrives to eat the apple. That's a sort of natural path. That's just what happens. There's no judgment. It's not, oh my goodness, the apple fell off the tree, or oh God, the worm is eating the apple now. <laughs> no, it's just a natural course of events. That's just nature taking its place. So can you respond to life in a natural way is the answer, is the question. <laughs> the answer, who knows what that is. But can you respond to life in a natural way? So when you're presented with possibilities, just think what feels the most normal to you. Don't go through a vast set of issues. And so just as an example, most of you guys know I was in Portugal and uh, my daughter phoned me up you know, three or four weeks beforehand and just said, I'm thinking of moving to Portugal. Uh, I'm going to have a little look round. Would you like to come? And I just said to her, yes. And she went, wow, that was a surprise. I didn't expect you to say that. And I said, no, I didn't expect me to say that either. But apparently the answer is yes. <laughs> Let's see what we make of it. And so after that, it was then, you know, check the diary in, see if that's possible. And then uh, book the flights and that's possible. And then off, off I went, you know, there's no sort of thinking about it. It was just a very spontaneous moment where I was just able to say, yes, I can do it. And that's because it felt absolutely natural. There was no, no present in that question. There was no no sitting in the back of my mind. It was just, oh, that's the ideal thing to do. Yes, I'll do it. And so trying to be as natural as you can is the, the Taoist way. And the more you act in a natural way, the more you remove suffering from your life. The less suffering, the easier things become, I reckon. So try to flow with the Tao today. Try to be as natural as you can. Okay, let's let the whole thing slow down. Gently come to a stop. Sometimes you feel lots of internal motion after having gone that long. That's fine. Let's just gather chi, lift up. Pour chi and draw down. Let the chi gather deep inside. And then when you release the hands, you just feel the chief flow on down to the ground. Let's do that a few times. Next time, just bring the chi back to your belly. If you're feeling very, very wobbly and out of sorts, you can do this 10 times, 20 times till you feel totally relaxed. But if you're feeling happy with three, you can just bring the hands down to the belly. And sometimes that just settles you anyway, just having the hands on the tummy really centers the chi and lower down to you. So if there's any question about sort of feeling still a bit wobbly, sometimes just standing with your hands in your tummy, centering yourself deep in the belly can really bring about 
great stability. We're not talking about earthing ourselves. We're not talking about connecting ourselves deeply into the ground and feeling rooted. Some people often report that they feel very kind of like, you know, in their heads and what they want to do is to be in the earth. But that's not it at all. You want to be in your body, in the middle, between the heaven and the earth. So you want to be equally rooted and equally connected to the heavens, but everything deep in the center of us. So bring yourself back to your core, not to your roots. Find your core, stay there deep inside. All Qigong is driven from our core. Connect deep inside. Relax deep inside. Good. We're just going to release the hands gently down by the sides. We're going to do some simple forward and back bends just to release the back. So we've rotated the spine really nicely. Now we're going to elongate the spine. So let's just take the hands up above the head stretch up into the blue sky and then we can just gently tip over the head the arms the ears and then let the rest of the body gently roll over as well slowly down into a comfortable posture and let the body hang back of the neck relaxes body relaxes and hangs tummy tucks extend softly towards your toes and release in line with the roots of your toes and release. Heading towards your insteps and release. And work our way back towards our heels. Okay, so lift the tailbone up behind, push the tailbone forwards, scroll the spine up, head, arms, and ears come up together, stretch up into the blue sky. Release gently backwards, and up, two, and up, three, and up, and four, and up. Let's do some side bends. Just go down to your left side. Down to your right side. Left. And right. And bring the right hand up again. Let's run through again. Tip over, head, arms, ears. Roll down, relax down, let the back of the legs relax, let the back of the neck relax. Knees are soft at this stage. Whole body relaxed, extending towards the toes. And release. The roots of your toes. Release. In steps. And release. Heels, release and relax, body hangs, lift the tailbone up behind, push the tailbone to the front, curl and roll up the spine, the head arms, ears going up, stretch. Release knees and hips forward as you lean back. Stretching up and gently back. Up and back. Up and gently back. Hands up into the blue sky. 
Left hand curls down towards the back of the left knee. Right hand down towards the back of the right knee. On the left. And on the right. Great, and then draw the hand up. So we're gonna run through the last two times, but try and straighten the legs if possible, just to get an extra hamstring stretch. Tip over head, arms and ears, legs stay straight. Curl down, relax down. Settle, sink down. Keep the legs as straight as you can. Okay, good, so in this posture, just dip, dip gently to your toes and release in line with the roots of your toes and release towards your insteps and release towards your heels relax and release tailbone up behind tailbone pushes forward spine rolls up Head, arms, and ears roll up. Gather up to the blue sky. Stretch up. Release knees and hips forward as you lean back. Stretching up. And gently back. Up. Gently back. Up. And gently back. Great. Left hand curls down. Right hand curls down. On the left. On the right. And comes up. Okay, great. Last time, legs straight, head, arms, and ears. Let the body hang and relax. Tummy tucked, legs straight. Stand softly towards your toes. And release. In line with the roots of your toes. And release. Working towards your insteps. And release. Working towards your heels. Release and relax, body hangs. Tailbone lifts up behind, tailbone pushes to the front. Spine rolls up, head, arms, ears roll up together. Blue sky, chin. Backwards and up. Two and up. Three and up. Four and up. Stretch hands up into the blue sky. Left hand arcs down towards the back of the left. Right hand down. Left hand down. Right hand down. And then take right hand up into the air. Just draw the hands out in front of the head for a few moments like a cheetah paw. Hands gently down. Let's gather some chi. Lift chi up. Pour chi down. Move the energy. Upper dantian, middle dantian, lower dantian. Gathering chi. Release hands, chi.
move the chi deep inside the belly. And then we can just gather our hands back to lower down Tien. Move the chi back down through the body. And eventually we're just going to let the hands settle on the belly. Just settle into this comfortable stance for a few moments. Nourishing chi deep inside the belly. Lower Dantian chi is abundant. As always, if you feel a bit lightheaded, you can carry on pulling down if you wish, but hopefully that's enough just to bring you back. Go deep inside. An abundance of energy gathering deep inside the belly. Okay, let's move ourselves into the Zhenang Qigong posture. Just step on Qi, bring the hands down by the sides. Body is relaxed and mind expands. Feel our connection through the earth, blue sky beyond, chi drawing up into the body. Feel a connection, blue sky above, down into the body. Our connection up into the blue sky. Lower down Tien, the source of all this energy gathering deep inside. The perfect mixture of yin and yang chi for you, just what's required. Everything gathering deep in the core of you. Body relax. So body relax is a really key idea. We have our Shenang standing stance, feet together, knees bent, elbow tucked forward, chin moving back. But it doesn't suit everybody. You have to find your version of the Zhenang Qigong stance. What helps your body to relax? Sometimes people find having their feet together really unrelaxing. It makes them really sort of, you know, feel like unstable, wobbly. Oh my goodness, I can't stand like this. And then you have to take your feet apart. Yeah, great, no problem at all. For me, I have fallen arches. And so I bring my heels together, but I don't bring my toes together. That feels much more relaxed for me. Sometimes people have slightly sort of not need. So when you say bend your knees, it forces the knees to push against each other. And that's not very relaxing. You have to perhaps open your toes out a bit to make that work. What is relaxed for you? What's sustainable? So the guidelines are there just to as that, guidelines really. Tip the tailbone forward, but not swinging the tailbone forward and pulling it all the way up to our forehead, because that's gonna be very wrong. There's this general circular movement in the hips, moving towards the front, up and back. So if you move your tailbone just a millimeter or two forwards, you imagine lifting hoi yin between your legs, just a millimeter or two upwards and moving Lower down Tien, the energy field, a millimeter or two backwards, and then dropping down the tailbone, a millimeter or two. And we get this little sort of movement. You can imagine the dotted arrows from the tailbone forwards up through Hoi Yin, back through um, the, the uh, lower down Tien, back to the Ming Men gate, and down to the tailbone. So we get this kind of like um, circular idea, a little flow diagram of getting the hips into the right posture, but you have to find your version of that. There's the same sort of flow diagram at the top of the spine as well. It's chin tucking in. And then on the back of the head, there's a point called Hoi Yin. That's kind of seeking Bai Hui. Bai Hui seeking the tip of the nose, the tip of the nose seeking the chin, seeking the Adam's apple. And when you get that kind of information, you can end up staring down at the ground directly. <laughs> 
as your head sort of curls and tucks in and stares down. Not that at all. It's like tucking chin back a millimeter, lifting the neck a tiny bit longer. And then suddenly that's it already, but lifted by way. So again, we're looking for a gentle variation. And as you know, tucking turbine forward just straightens the lower back a tiny bit, tucking chin backward just straightens the cervical vertebra, vertebra a little bit. And we suddenly get this lovely straight spine. And then that allows my way on top of the head to open up into the blue sky. And then on the soles of your feet, long quan open as well, because we're just bending our knees a little, we're just connecting deep into the earth. So how do you make all that happen for yourself? I can only offer you sort of guidelines. And then you have to start taking your own liberties, making your own little adjustments. Standing Qigong can seem an adventure. And originally when it was translated to me by a Master Lam, he said, it translates as standing like a post. And standing like a post, there's no flexibility in that at all. But the more you hear it translated as things like standing like a tree, the more you realize there's very gentle movement in it, like the swaying of a tree. So don't feel you have to be rigid or you're getting it wrong. You have to be soft and flexible, allow your body to change whenever it needs to change. If your feet feel wrong, adjust them. If your neck feels wrong, adjust them. If your hips don't feel right, adjust them. Chest soft in the center, but shoulders back. It's not shoulders wrenched back. And it's also not chest soft in the center, so everything becomes totally hollowed. There's a midpoint between those two things that feels comfortable for you. And everybody's shoulders are just a little bit different. Depends on tension. One of the things that I find useful is the center of the breastbone, just lifting up slightly towards your chin. And that's only personal to me. So we lift Tanjong directly upwards, just a millimeter or two. And sometimes that just adjusts the spine. For someone like me who has a tendency to slightly slouch, just by lifting the center, lifting Tanjong a tiny bit, it just adjusts the spine. And suddenly my spine feels better, and my chin feels better, and my neck feels better. So a tiny little lift the center of the chest rather than. A sort of hollowing, it's a tiny lifting of tangential. Works better for me. What works better for you? So we're standing here, hopefully, in our best standing posture. Body relaxes and the mind is therefore able to expand. Back to the original idea. Lots of pain in the body, the mind tends to go to that area. So as you stand, and your posture is just a little bit incorrect. You start to feel a buildup of pain between your shoulder blades. And then your mind goes there. You can't think of anything else except, oh, my back, I can't do this standing. She's doing this rubbish. It always hurts me. And so we haven't allowed our minds to expand. Our minds have contracted into one tiny part of the body. And we experience suffering. So you have to adjust your body accordingly. Try lifting the breastbone, try moving the shoulders back, try a different stance, try changing the attitude of the tailbone. And then hopefully you can find a place where the pain suddenly goes away and you think, oh, there we go. And maybe it'll come back, but for the time being, you're standing in a pain-free posture, perhaps sitting initially in a pain-free posture, and that allows your mind to be free. You're no longer responding to the call of the body. And that can allow your mind to soften and open. How does it feel in your body today? Feel into the head. Relax the brain, relax the mind, quieten the mind. Relax the eyes, relax the jaw. We don't go slack jawed, but we have gentle uh, separation between the teeth, tongue lightly touching the roof of the mouth, soft breathing through the nose if you can. Lips softly together, 
forehead, relaxed. Teacher Ling's lovely image. Imagine your eyebrows like two caterpillars walking away from each other. <laughs> That's just beautiful. It just opens the center spot on your forehead. Just that area of yin tang opening, softly opening. Taking the furrows from your brow. In your head, your face, totally relaxed. And next into the neck. The neck takes the whole weight of the head. Sometimes if your head is too far forwards, then suddenly you get a pain in the upper neck. Just by bringing the chin backwards, it sort of brings the um, head more directly above the spine. And so the weight's more evenly distributed. Sometimes that just makes the pain go away. And so be aware of the fact that your chin might be jutting forwards a little bit and the weight of the head might be forwards. And that might be the case every single day. So slowly that kind of wears away the cartilage and things get a bit more clunky and less, a bit more painful. So just by adjusting your head, Tucking the chin, lifting by way. Sometimes you can just get rid of that. A little lift in the center of the chest sometimes helps. So we've got the weight of the head evenly distributed down through the seven cervical vertebrae, through the muscles of the neck. Muscles of the neck can be quite tricky things. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you suddenly think, oh, so neck. Must have slept in a draft. Yeah, possibly. There are four points on the base of your skull called wind points. And sometimes the wind enters there. That is why we often wear scarves. So you do have to be slightly aware of the fact, you know, if you've got the duvet, I don't know, around your, under your arms, let's say. And, you know, that does leave your neck a little bit exposed. And if perhaps there is a slight draft on a windy night. There is a slight draft. You don't even normally notice it, but one cold windy night, you suddenly wake up and think, oh, God, my neck is sore. What's gone on? And that's probably it. The, or during that day, you've been wandering around in the wind, in the cold. You haven't had a scarf on. So it's called invasion of cold. Invasion of wind cold. So we just exercise our neck and shoulders. We can do that now. We can just gently lift our shoulders up towards our ears. We can gently roll our shoulders towards the back and then just let the shoulders sink down, let the whole body relax with it. Do that movement three or four times, just gently rolling. There are plenty of lovely Qigong exercises that work on the neck. And the more you work with the neck muscles, the less susceptible they are to wind cold. So just doing crane's neck, dragon's head, which we were doing in last night's class, yesterday morning's class. But also there are lots of simple Qigong exercises just to work on the neck and loosen up the neck muscles. Let's let our shoulders relax and feel into our shoulders now. Feel from the top of your shoulder, top of your neck, top of your shoulder, outside of your arm down to your fingers. Inside of the arm to your armpits. Just feel that whole structure. Space in the shoulders, space in the arms, space at the elbows, space in the forearms, space in the fingers. We open up space. Open up space in your neck and shoulders. Just feel that anything is tight. And just be softened and opened a little. We can just introduce space into a tight muscle and feel it soften and dissolve. Feel the chest, the whole chest area. It's an awful lot in there, an awful lot going on, lungs and heart. We just kind of, sort of digestive channels and stomach and things like that. There's plenty going on in there. But just feel a bit of space in your chest. Just try lifting up Tanjong a tiny bit. Just rolling your shoulders back a tiny bit. 
and feeling your space generously open inside your chest. And to that end, we can just move our hands a tiny bit. So your hands are probably hanging down by your sides. You've seen John, my colleague, do this before. Just turn your thumbs forwards and then out to the side and let your shoulders gently open up as you roll your thumbs towards the back. When you breathe out, you can gently curl your thumbs back to the starting point. We'll just do a couple more of those. Roll the thumbs back, whole shoulder and chest open as we breathe in. As we breathe out, we can let the whole thing relax back, close. One more time. Gentle, easy breathing. Well, we worked the length of our spine with our opening exercises. We worked our hips and knees and ankles with our opening exercises. We just sort of feel into the hips, into the knees, see if there's anything uncomfortable there. Check and see if there are any adjustments you have to make. Okay, from this standing posture, body relaxes, mind expands. We think through every cell of our body. Just by bringing attention to any area that requires it, instantly healing begins there. So you might be working on a knee or your lung or your elbow, whatever it might be. You place your mind there for a moment. You bathe it in chi. You imagine it glowing with all this fresh energy. And you gently move your mind away, switch your mind off, and the body takes that flow of chi and uses it to heal. As simple as that. Of course, we know that if we keep paying attention to the problem, then we're going to be giving it power. So if every time you bend over, you think, my sore back, oh, my sore back, I better not be careful, I better be careful with my sore back. You're actually giving your back the information it's sore. So how do we change that information? Constantly softening, constantly opening, constantly imagining space, constantly going past the pain and gently, gently moving and thinking, each time I move my back, it opens and it gets better. Each time I move that space, I create extra space inside, extra healing for movement. And so by just using these simple ideas, we can gently work past the blockage, the idea of blockage, the actual physical blockage. Okay. We're just going to start with our opening form, nice and easy. Just gently turning the palms to face towards the back. Raising fingers to 90 degrees, softly pushing and feeling the body expanding out into the chi field. When we draw the hands back by the thighs, chi pulls into the body. It's a really easy movement, softly connecting outwards, drawing chi back inside, connecting out, gathering in. Do a couple more of those at your own speed. When you finish, you let the hands relax, connect deep into the earth, gather a ball of chi and allow the chi to flow into your belly. Turn the palms down, hands to the sides, hands to the back. 
Senchi deep inside. Draw hands up the side of the body to lightly touch that bow. Circle that bow. Just touch that bow. Senchi deep inside. Feel that it's possible for you to live in your internal organs, sending all this energy to the heart, to the lungs, spleen, pancreas, liver, kidneys, filling with chi. Elbows drift back, hands release forwards, hands in the blue sky, gather chi back to the third eye. Fill your brain with chi. Abundance of energy deep inside the brain. Open elbows, wrists, hands out, out into the blue sky. Turn palms down, scoop the hands, lift you up, draw the hands gently above the crown of the head. And then let's expand, stretch up. Hands drift down, 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 down in front of the chest, front of Tan Chong, breastbone. Good. And then from here, we just make a little ball of chi with our fingertips and rest on top of the belly button. Fingers touching ever so softly. Tiny little contact between the fingertips. And then we step on chi, to step on the heels to open the toes. Step on the toes to bring the feet to parallel, maybe a little bit wider. And then the structure for the standing posture is to move the heels a little bit wider than the toes. And that just emphasizes this soft transfer of weight to the front of the foot really helps our connection from this kidney point into the earth, into the blue sky beyond, allowing us to gather chi from the blue sky up into our bodies. So as discussed, you have to think about that. Does that work for you? Is it a difficult stance? Do you need to have your feet parallel? Do you need to have your toes sticking out? What works for your knees? What works for your hips? Can you sit your tailbone down, tuck your tailbone forward a little bit? It's going to help the stance in the long run, getting a straight lower back. But again, you can only do what you can do. Drop tailbone down, lift by Hui up, lengthens the neck. Just let your hands relax down. Open and hold a ball of chi. So the holding the ball of chi exercise, not everybody can sustain that. It depends on your kind of internal amount of chi, as it were. So if you're already strong, you've got lots of chi inside, this becomes a quite an easy exercise. But sometimes when our chi is depleted, after having hands in your hands in front for a little while, they just kind of soften down and relax down. That's fine. You can always bring them back onto the belly if you wish, but otherwise, we just hold them, holding a ball in front of the belly. Sometimes that ball will even float up and come up in front of your chest, but it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you can sustain. And then, of course, there's always a question of ego, wanting to look great. I like to have my hands up in front of my chest so everybody looks at me and thinks, wow, he must have lots of cheek. <laughs> are you doing it for ego's sake? Because if you are, just put the hands back on the belly and <laughs> let some more chi gather. Do you find your own personal posture, whatever seems to suit you? No right, no wrong. And also changes, changes all the time. So yesterday you spent an hour standing with your hands right up in front of your chest and unflinching, totally dissolved into chi and today you can't even take your hands off your belly what's going on there yeah well chi changes just accept it no right no wrong these things happen <laughs> it's nice don't expect anything from your standing posture so sometimes when we sink into our knees we go down low enough we drop our tailbone and sit down sometimes we get this shaking sensation in our thighs a real kind of wobble Suddenly your thighs are going, oh, 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 oh. you just think, gosh, what's going on there? It's one of those kind of nerve reactions. I'm sure everybody remembers 
sitting in school with somebody whose knee used to bounce up and down automatically and you couldn't stop it. <laughs> or perhaps it was you. You'd feel a sort of vibration bouncing on and on and on and some let their knee bounce up and down. There's a kind of like a, an enjoyment in it, that automatic thing that the knee can do, the muscle just kind of responding. So sometimes when your leg muscles shake like that, it can be quite enticing. You can think, oh, God, my leg muscles are really shaking. Must be doing well, must be chi releasing, must be something going on there. But as soon as you put judgment on it, it suddenly becomes a problem or it suddenly becomes something you're looking for. And the next time you do your standing and the leg doesn't shake, you think, oh, hang on, what's wrong? I'm not doing it properly. It's not shaking. I'm going to make it shake. <laughs> so you start to do it yourself. Again, that's the ego stepping in. We're just letting the body do whatever it wants to do. So if you find your legs wobbling, if you find your hands drifting down, coming up, just go with it. Don't expect it next time. Don't get hooked up on chi sensations. Don't get hooked up on the look of your standing stance. People judging you for your ability. Forget it. So the raison d'etre behind the standing stance is this. Plug yourself into the earth, plug yourself into the heavens. Find a stance that opens the body. Hold the hands in front. They gather chi. They channel chi back in. So everything about the standing stance is about gathering chi. The more chi you gather, the healthier you become. In the standing posture, there's not much going on. So you can allow your mind to quieten. As you stand there with a quiet mind, she is not being consumed. Quiet mind. Relaxed body, chi gathering well inside. Abundance of chi, all functions return to perfect working order. That is just the way of it. Quiet mind, open body, chi gathers, health grows. Don't be afraid to make little adjustments to your stance. Let your mind quiet. Sometimes I tell my beginning students about the picture of your mind. As if you're staring out at a cinema screen, suddenly an image comes up. You can just, almost like a windscreen wiper, brush the image away to one side. Another thought comes up, brush away to the other side. So as the thoughts arrive, and inevitably they will do, they always do, you just avoid engaging with them. You just gently usher them out of our view and relax. So we'll just stand for a minute or two more like this. Nice and quiet.
All right, so just gently draw your hands back towards your belly. Slowly gathering the hands back, bringing back the little ball of chi deep onto the dantian, incorporating this ball of chi deep inside your dantian. So this external dantian mixing with this internal dantian, chi gathering deep inside. And in fact, actually, you could drop your hands flat onto lower dantian if you wish, just for a moment or two to really, really nourish, to feel the significance of that. Chi, deep inside, nourishing lower dantian, gathering in the core of your body. This chi can heal your body from anything. Okay, let's bring our hands back. Make that little ball once more. Okay, so let's bring our hands up into the prayer position and then step on chi. Bring the feet back together again, heel toe into our standing posture. Okay, great. So let's just draw the hands up in front, up and over the top of the head, expand up into the blue sky. And then just soften the knees, let the hands drift down a little bit, open up little fingers, ring fingers, middle fingers, split the hands apart, out to shoulder height. Gather chi round to the front. And then send the chi deep inside. Allow this chi to flow. Flowing from deep inside. Feel the brain abundant with chi, apadantian chi is abundant, blood and chi flowing well. Drift the elbows back, bring the hands back, lightly touch the bow, send the chi inside and illuminate your organs inside. Imagine lungs filled with chi, the heart filled with chi, to your spleen, pancreas, your liver, your kidneys, an abundance of chi, blood and chi flowing well, all organs working well. All functions of your body returning to perfect working order. Drifting the hands back, back of the hands move forwards, turn the palms over, wave of chi out, and then gently draw that chi back. Let the hands relax into the belly. Go deep inside. Holding the chi. Feel that extraordinary abundance of energy. Lower Dantian Chi is abundant, blood and Chi flowing. All functions of your body returning to perfect working order. Just feel that information. All functions of your body returning to perfect working order. Good. Let's circle three times around lower dantian. Just attracting chi from all around the body, bringing it back into this core area. Storing it deep inside, and then three circles the opposite direction. That just allows us to message the body, let the body know exercise is coming to an end. We've got to go back into daily life, reset the body. It's about resetting the chi field around you. So as you stand here, you can imagine your wei chi layer just around your skin, that protective coating of chi, and then your chi body about a meter around. And that's uh, uh, protecting you, but also connecting you as well. So you, this extraordinary chi being, protected, connected, happy, safe, healing, deep inside. And today, we're making a decision to flow with the natural way of things. Time to stop swimming against the tide. Time to go with the flow. Be in the Tao. So just see yourself as a being of light inside your shield of energy. Happy, safe, connected. Well, Put a big smile on the face and let your hands down by your sides. Oh, you can open your eyes and wiggle the fingers, move your toes a little bit, perhaps stretch the body out in any way it needs stretching out. 
And then if you'd like to unmute yourselves, we'll all say how lie together. How lie means good already. Everything is already fixed. So we make that assumption. So hands up in the air. One, two. Ha-la. One, two. Ha-la. Ha-la. Last time. One, two. Ha. Very good. Thank you very much for being here this morning. As per usual, this class will go up online. Um, very, very nice to see you all.